Welcome this week to Wednesday Club Story Time. Hopefully you enjoyed what we done last week, enjoyed the worksheet we done last week and the colouring. Got some different things to make, some different worksheets this week. I want to remind you especially to start with that last week's story. Last week we looked at a story, didn't we, about two different men who went to pray at the temple. The first one leaves was a Pharisee, he was a very good person, at thought he was better than everyone else if you remember. He looked, was very concerned about what he looked like on the outside. He boasted about how good he was. And he forgot that God sees all of us, not just the bits we like people to see on the outside. He sees the problems, he sees the bad things, he sees the mistakes. The things we hide from other people. The second man in the story went to pray at the temple. He was a tax collector and he was a worried man because he knew he'd done things wrong. He knew that God saw everything he did and he couldn't hide anything from God at all. He was very concerned and he simply said sorry to God. He asked God to forgive him. He asked God to take away the bad things in life and he trusted God to keep his promises. Because you see, in the Bible, God has promised if we say sorry, he hears our prayer and he forgives us. He promises that if we ask him to be our saviour and friend, he will hear our prayer. He'll keep his promise. He'll do that. And he can be our saviour. And he can be our friend. You see, that man realised something. He realised in all of our lives, the wrong things. The Bible calls them sin. They stop us being God's friend. They're like a barrier between us and God. And if we say sorry, the Bible says, we can be forgiven those wrong things. Why? Because Jesus, God's son, he died on a cross to pay the price of those wrong things. So that you and I can be God's friends. You and I can be forgiven. And that was why last week's memory text, which is also this week's memory text, is so important. We remember, didn't we? Man looks on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Found in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. In other words, God sees the bits about us that no one else sees. God sees the bits about us that we try to hide. But that doesn't stop him loving us. He loves us despite those wrong things. And that's why. He sent Jesus to be your friend and mine. Now, this week's story happened to Jesus. It's one of the stories Jesus told. This actually happened in Jesus' life one day. And I want to think about a story happened one day. Because when Jesus lived, many people loved to hear the stories he told about God. He told them things about God they didn't know before. He told them how they could be God's friends. He told them how they could live a life that pleased God. He told them important questions, answers he gave them to those questions about heaven, about things in this world, things that God does for us, and how we need to be right with God. So everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people would follow because they wanted to listen to what Jesus said. Also, Jesus healed people, people that no one else could heal, people that doctors even couldn't help. Because Jesus, the Son of God, he had the power to heal them. So wherever Jesus went, there were always big crowds following. They either wanted to listen to what Jesus said, or they just wanted to see the amazing things Jesus did, or they watched, they needed healing. Or they had a problem they really needed Jesus' help with. Also, sometimes, there were some people, now these were a bit like the Pharisees, you remember? Some of those Pharisees, they hated Jesus. They didn't like it because Jesus talked about sin, now we need to be forgiven, and now we need a saviour, and they got very angry. And they used to follow Jesus around, and they went round, try and see what Jesus was doing so they could catch him out. So they could perhaps get Jesus into trouble for some of the things Jesus said. So there were not people that wanted to listen to Jesus, people that loved Jesus. Those are the people that didn't love Jesus. Absolutely. They were desperate to see what was going on. So wherever Jesus went, there were lots of people following him every day. And the story we're telling you today happened one day when Jesus was in a house. The houses in Bible's times were a little bit different to ours. They didn't have slopey roofs that we got in our houses. Most houses in Bible time looked more like a box. They probably looked a bit like that. Okay, well, you imagine a little square house like that. Okay. Most, most of the house would have been just one big room inside. They weren't very big houses, but everyone would sleep and eat and cook and live in that one big room inside the houses, unless you were a very rich person. What they did have was upstairs. Now the upstairs wasn't like ours, you have stairs inside the house you go up. Bible times, the stairs would have been on the outside of the house, see? And you'd walk 
on hot evenings you'd walk upstairs and then perhaps you'd spend the time sat on the flat roof. The sun go down, perhaps you might eat your tea up there. It was really hot, sometimes they'd sleep on the flat roof outside the house. So a bit like a camping holiday. That was what the houses were like in Bible times. And one day Jesus was in this house and there were lots of people come to see him. There were people that were ill. There were people that wanted to hear about God and there would have been some Pharisees there as well who didn't like Jesus at all and were just turned up just to see if they could get Jesus into trouble by listening to what he said and catching him out. When one day in that crowded house, Jesus in the middle, four more people turned up to see Jesus. They weren't alone, they were carrying someone. You see, they had a friend that was really ill. The Bible says he was paralyzed. That means all the spine that you got down your back, all down there, all the special nerves go from your brain, to tell your hands and your feet how to move. Some way, that man had an accident, those nerves were working. So even though his brain said to his hand and feet move, hand and feet couldn't move. All he could do was lie on the bed. He couldn't work. He couldn't look after himself. He was helpless. He needed his friends every day. His friends had heard about Jesus and they wanted to take him to see Jesus. And they said, if we can take him to Jesus, Jesus can make him well. The problem was, they picked him up on his bed. That wouldn't have been a big bed like you sleep in, a sort of solid bed. It's probably like a bl big blanket thing. So he grabbed forth and grabbed a corner's blanket. Between them, they carried a friend on this big blanket, ruggy thing, a rug or mat, something like that. And they carried him to this house where Jesus was. When they got there, what's the problem? The house is full. It's absolutely full. There's no room to get in. There's people even stood outside the door looking in. There's even people looking in for the windows. Whichever way they go, they can't get into the house. What do they do? They give up. So they go home and say, we'll come back another day. Or perhaps they just sit there and feel sorry for themselves. All this effort, carry them all this way. When we get here, it's no good. I had a better idea than that. Nothing was going to stop them taking their friend to see Jesus. They knew outside the house, the stairs that went onto the roof. So they carried their friend up the steps onto the roof of the house. On the roof of the house, on the flat roof, began to make a hole. Make a hole right in the middle of the roof there. And the hole got bigger and bigger and bigger. It was big enough to get someone down through the hole. And then they got their friend on his rug, or his mat or blanket where he's led on. They tied a bit of rope to each of the four corners and they lowered their friend through the hole in the roof, right the way down inside the house, right in front of Jesus inside the house. Can you imagine being in that house and suddenly the big hole appears in the roof and his body comes down through the roof. The dust is falling down and bits are going everywhere and eventually this man is lowered through the roof right in front of Jesus. And the people have to move out of the way because you don't really want a bed land on your head, do you? So they move out of the way and the bed's there in the middle. And the man led on it in front of Jesus. His four friends' faces were poking over the top of the hole looking down to see what was going on, I expect. There he is, led right there. Right, Jesus, Jesus could see the man. Jesus knew everything about that man. He knows everything about you and me because that is what our text tells us, doesn't it? Man looks at the outside, but the Lord looks at the heart. In other words, he sees everything. He could see the man couldn't walk. Jesus could see something else. He could see that deep down in that man's heart, there was another problem. The same problem I've got, the same problem you've got. Same problem that our mums and dads and everyone have got. We have all done things wrong. We might try to hide them, but we've all done things wrong. And we need someone who can take away those wrong things. The Bible says, doesn't it? It's called sin. The Bible says we've all done it. The Bible says we've all sinned. Every one of us. And we've come short of what God expects in our life. In other words, we are separated from God of the mistakes we made. As Jesus looked at this man, Jesus could see that he had made mistakes in his life like the rest of us. And Jesus knew that although he needed to walk, there was something even more important. He needed to be right with God. He needed to be forgiven. He needed to know what it was for God to be his friend. And to do that, he needed our sins taken away. 
And so do you. And so do I. And you know, Jesus said to that man, first thing he said to him was, your sins are forgiven you. Jewish leaders, those Pharisees, got very angry. Who does Jesus think he is? Only God can forgive sins. He can't do that. They're right. Only God can forgive sins. But what they forgot, and what they wouldn't believe and accept, is that Jesus is the Son of God. He came into this world to make a way that you and I can be forgiven. That way was made when Jesus died on a cross. All the bad things we've done, he paid the price so that we can be forgiven. He came to be our saviour. He has the power to forgive sins because he is the son of God. The Bible says, Jesus himself actually says in the Bible one day, I and my father are one. He says, we love you. God loves you and me exactly the same today as he loved that man. That is why the Bible says God so loved the world. I mean, really, 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 really loves. So loved the world. He gave his only son, Jesus. If we believe in him, we can be forgiven. We can be saved. The Bible says we will not perish, but we can have everlasting life. In other words, our relationship with God can be made right through trust in Jesus. When the Jewish leader said, that's impossible, Jesus, you can't forgive sins. He said, which is harder to do? To say you're forgiven or to say, stand up and walk when you're paralyzed. And the Jewish leaders didn't know what to say because they're both impossible. It's impossible for you and me to forgive our sins. Impossible for you and me to make someone better. I had that much wrong with him. Doctors weren't so clever in those days as what they are today. Even today, sometimes there's things doctors can't do. So they didn't know what to say. And Jesus said, I'll prove to you that I'm the Son of God. I'll prove to you that I have power to forgive sins. He's not only going to forgive his sins, I can make him walk. He turns to the man and says, stand up, walk. And the man stood up. His legs might not have ever worked for years and years and years. It didn't matter. Immediately his legs were better. All the muscles in his legs worked, the sinews in his legs, the bones, everything. The things that hadn't worked for years just suddenly started working again. The messages from his brain that told his legs to move worked. Everything worked. He stood up. He could jump. He could run. He could walk. He could carry his bed. He could do everything. And that man went home that day really, really happy. Happy because he had some amazing friends. They tried so hard to take him to Jesus. Happy. Because they found a way of making a hole in the roof and lowering him through down so he could see Jesus. Happy because he could walk and he could run and he could look after his family and he could go to work again. And most importantly, I believe he was happy because he knew that God loved him. Because he knew that he was forgiven. Because he knew that Jesus was his saviour and Jesus was his friend. And that's the question I want to ask you. Do you know Jesus as your friend and saviour? Because the Bible tells us that if we say sorry, he's promised he'll hear our prayers. He's promised he'll forgive us. If we trust him to be our friend and saviour, he's promised he will be our friend and saviour. Because he loves you and he loves me. And his love is bigger and greater than anything else. Sometimes we sing a chorus, don't we? We sing, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. It's so high. You can't get over it. It's so low, you can't get under it. It's so wide, you can't get under it. You can't measure how much God loves you. Oh, wonderful love. He loves you that much. He wants you to be his friend. He wants you to trust him as your saviour, just like that man did. And know that you can know in your heart of hearts that God loves you and that you are forgiven and that Jesus is your saviour and friend. Thank you so much for listening. We're just going to pray now, okay? Dear Lord God, we thank you that you love us so much. You may know everything about us, like you did with that man on the bed who was paralyzed and couldn't walk. You knew about how he couldn't walk, but you also knew about all the things inside his life that no one else knew. And you loved him, and you forgave him, and you saved him. Lord, help us to realize that you know everything about us, and help us to trust you to be our friend and saviour. And forgive our sins too. 
Thank you so much for your wonderful love, which is so big, so high, so low, so wide, and so great. Amen. Now, as I promised you last week, I've got a few more things to do this week to make. So following this video on YouTube, there will be a couple of sheets that you can print off to make and colour and do some various things. I'll just go through what we got there, okay? First of all, there is one downloadable sheet like this. I get those things see it properly, okay? And it's a worksheet, it tells a story. A man being lowered down for the roof and Jesus healing him and going home. It's got a word search on there where you can find these words. And also a little bit of the story there that you can fill in as well. So there's that the colour you can do. Just remind yourself of the story, which is good. Also, what are you gonna make? One of these little houses. Okay, so there's another sheet of paper on it you can print off that look a bit like this. All the details on there and what you need to make, okay? So you need to print it off and then you need some scissors. So you can cut it out. And then when you've cut it out, you need some pens, felt tips, colours, pencil colours, something like that. And then you can colour in bits of it so it looks a bit like that. And cut around the edges of it. And then you might need a bit of adult help with this. Okay, you've got to fold it. So there are all these dotted lines, you've got to fold along. So you fold along that line, and that line, and that line, and that line, there, there, and there. Then you've got some funny complicated folds then, so you've got to fold it like that. On each of the corners. And when you've folded all the four corners, it ends up being folded like that, then you tuck those two edges in, that edge in, and then, get just right, the house should be virtually the right shape then. Ah. And just to make sure it stays together, you've got some sellotape, okay, a little bit of sellotape on the edges, there, there, on the front there, and then you make up a little house, it looks just like this, the little house that Jesus would have been inside of. It's all a house with the steps on the outside. There's no hole in the roof. You can draw a hole in the roof. You want a little black hole there. If you want to pretend that's where the man went down through, it's up to you. Please have fun making it. Hope I haven't made it too complicated because next week we're making something different. Next week, no colouring needed. Next week, you will need scissors just to make one cut. But apart from that, you've got some folding to do and we're going to make something up different next week. It'll be to do another story about Jesus' life, but you have to wait for next week to find that one out. Have a good week. See you next time. Bye then.